In this video I'll show you how you can fetch JSON data from an API with paging using Must Fabric notebooks and write that data to a Lakehouses file section. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we're continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering. And today we're covering fetching JSON data from an API using notebooks. Nowadays APIs or application programming interfaces are a very common data source for data solutions. And thus I find it very essential that every data engineer knows the basics how to fetch data from an API. In Maxed Fabric there are multiple different ways of getting data out from an API, but in my opinion notebooks are the best tool for this task. Since getting data out from more complex APIs with low-code tools like data pipelines can get tricky due to limitations in those tools. So in this video we're going to use notebooks, but you can leave some comments down below if you would like to see a video where I teach how to fetch data from an API using data pipelines. In this tutorial we are going to use an open API so you can follow along with this tutorial with me and learn the basics of fetching data from APIs with paging and writing that data to a lake house. The notebook that I will be using in this video can be found by clicking the link in the description. But now let's get started with the tutorial. The API that we are going to use in this tutorial is going to be the Pokemon API that can be found by going to the pokeap.co. By using this API we can get out some Pokemon related data. And there is actually this cool try it now feature on this page where we can try out the different API calls to this API using different URLs. And always when you start working with a new API it is always good to check the documentation first. And with this API we have a quite extensive documentation that we're not going to go through in this video but if you're interested it is good to know that we have everything documented here and you can check out how to fetch data from different endpoints. And here we can modify this API call here just to use the Pokemon endpoint and then we can click submit and see what kind of result we get. And here we can see the result that we're getting and we can see that we have information about different Pokemons here. And we can actually click this view raw JSON in order to see what kind of JSON we are getting out of this. This is just a pretty illustration of that JSON. And with this raw JSON we get that same information but in this more text-based format. And here we can see that we have this count which indicates how many Pokemons we have in this endpoint. And there are 1302 Pokemon. And then we get this next here that we're going to come back shortly. And then also that previous that we're not going to use in this tutorial. But here are the results that we're getting from this endpoint. And we can see by default this only returns 20 Pokemons. And now we can go to Fabric and try to fetch out this Pokemon data by using a notebook. And let's go to Fabric. And here I have a notebook where I have prepared some code that we can use to fetch data out from that API. And for that we are going to use this pretty standard library in our Python arsenal that is going to be this requests library. And with this request library we have this get method. And then we can use this get method and basically get data out from this URL that we have specified here. And this URL is actually the Poke API's Pokemon endpoint URL that we also tried out here. So basically we would be able to replicate the same thing that we just did here by just using our notebook. And then we are going to print out what is the data type of this response that is coming out and then we're going to print it out and let's see what happens if we run this. Our run took few seconds to complete but now it is done. Basically we just got this response back from the API and the response says 200. This means basically that the API call went fine. But this doesn't show us any data yet even though we printed out this response. It just says respond 200. But the data is actually there already. We just need to do a few tricks to get it show up here. And for that I have prepared this second cell here. This is pretty much the same stuff happening here but here we are turning this response into a dictionary using this JSON function here. And now we can run this and let's see what happens. 
And now we can see when we print out the type of this response.json, it is actually a dictionary. And then when we print out this response.json, we can see that data there. We can see that we have exactly the same data we had on that Pokemon tryout page there. We can see that we have the count and then we have that next and previous and then we have this results array where we have all the information about those Pokemons there. But yeah, this is only showing 10 Pokemons by default. And we, we have actually this next URL where we could find the information about the next 20 Pokemons that we have in this API. We can actually modify these offset and limit parameters here in order to fetch all the Pokemon data that we have available. In this next cell, I have done that. So basically I have defined the offset to be zero and then the limit to be the maximum amount of Pokemons we have there. So by doing this, we would fetch all the Pokemons that are available in this API using just one API call. And now let's run this and let's see what happens. With this API call, we can see that we're getting way more information out from that API. And here are all the Pokemons that are available in that API. And next we can talk about what if we would like to write this data to our lakehouse file section. And we can check it out in this next cell that I have here. And with this code here, we would be able to write that data to our lakehouse. So basically now we would need two other libraries with our request library. We would need this OS library and then we would need this JSON library. So first we would be doing that same get request to that Pokemon API and now fetching all the data that is available in that endpoint by using those offset and limit parameters. And then we would convert that response to that dictionary and save it to this data variable. Then I have my lakehouse path defined here and then I have this make dirs function from the OS library that will actually create the folder to our lake house if it doesn't already exist. And then we're going to use this with open and just write that Pokemon data to that file path here that I have defined. And we're going to name that file Pokemon.json. And then we're only going to write that results array from our data dictionary to that file. And now we can run this and see what happens. And now it is running. This should be already done and we can refresh our lake house and if you're wondering how you can get this lake house path here you can just click these three dots here and copy the file api path and then you're getting this kind of a file path here that is basically lake house default and then files and after that you can specify the folder like i have specified here where do you want to write those files but this should be the standard path that is used with the default lake house that you have attached to this notebook. But yeah, now in this Fabric DE series 29 folder, we should have that Pokemon.json and there it is. And then we can use this next cell to query out that data from this Pokemon.json file. And let's see how does that look. And here I have the code that will basically read that JSON file there to a data frame. And then we are going to display that data frame. And here we can see the data that we have here. So we have only the information that was in that uh, results array there. So we skipped all this metadata information here that is related to the API logic since we don't really need that. But yeah, here we can see that we have all the information about those Pokemon and their API pages where we could find more information about those. But what if we would like to fetch this data page by page, meaning that we wouldn't fetch all the data in one API call and we would actually utilize this next page functionality here and loop through the API until we have fetched out all the Pokemons by using this paging feature. Let's check out that next. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. And because our Pokemon API has this paging functionality, so we have different pages in this API. And this URL tells what is the next set of Pokemon that we have there in the API. Basically, we only have here the set of the 21st Pokemons that we have available in the API. And this next URL gives us this API call that would fetch the next 20 and so on. 
And after our next 20 value is null, then we know that there are no more pages left in this API. So that means that we have already gone through all the pages. And now I will show you how you can implement this paging functionality in notebooks in order to fetch this Pokemon data out page by page. And now let's go back to our notebook and we can show us our second cell. Also in this cell we will be writing this data to a lakehouse folder and using a timestamp in that folder path. And that's why I have also imported this date time here that can be used to fetch the current timestamp that we can then use in our folder path. But basically now we have expanded our code a bit. So we have this base URL and then we have the endpoint and out of those we are creating this URL from which we are then getting that data out. And then we have this next URL to which we are first setting this URL to be our first value that we start the API calls with. And then we have this basic iterator here that just keeps track how many iterations we have gone through. And here we are creating the lakehouse path using this base path first and then the endpoint that is Pokemon and then we have the current timestamp in the file path. So if we would run this code multiple times all the runs would go to their different folders. So we don't overwrite any data in our lake house. Then I have also this make dires here so it will actually make this timestamp folder because it doesn't exist by default in our lake house and we don't want to get that missing directory error when we try to write data to that folder. And here I have a while loop that will run until our next URL is none, meaning that we don't have any more API pages left. And here I'm just printing what is the endpoint we're getting the data out from and what is the API call index or the iteration number that we are running. And here I have basically the same code that I had previously there where we just get the data out from the API using the URL and then we write that data to our lake house using that lake house file path. But now we are also adding that iteration number to each file since we're going to write multiple files. Basically one file for one API page that we're fetching. And then after we have completed this, we are going to set our next URL to that next property value out from our data. So we are always setting it to be the next URL that we are fetching. And we are continuing this loop until our next URL is none or null. But yeah, we can run this code and see what happens. And now it will start running and we can see that we are fetching data out from that API very fast and iterating over those pages that we have there. And now we can see that we are done with this iteration and we had 66 pages of data there since we began with the zero here and we iterated to, through 66 pages. And now we should have some data in this folder. So let, let's refresh this folder. And here I have this Pokemon folder and under that we have that timestamp folder. And here I have all the different pages that we fetched data from, from that API. Basically here I have all the data that I had in that one Pokemon.json file that we fetched previously, but here we got all that same data out by using this paging feature. And in many real scenarios, you probably need to build your API calls using this paging, since probably most APIs won't allow you to fetch all the data that is available using a single call. So you need to get used to using these kind of paging features in order to fetch data out. Next, I would like to fetch data out from another endpoint in that Pokemon API. And here I have the code that would fetch data out from Pokemon and Perry endpoints. And I have just modified the code that we just saw a bit and now I have wrapped the logic to this for loop that will actually loop through this endpoint list per endpoint. And then we are fetching data out from both of these endpoints. So basically first we would go through the Pokemon endpoint and fetch data out from that Pokemon endpoint using this code and then next we would use that berry endpoint and fetch data out from that berry endpoint. And here we are constructing that URL using this endpoint here that will come out from this endpoint array and attaching it to our base URL. So basically in the second iteration of this for loop we would attach this berry after this URL here. And now we can run this code and see what happens. Now it is running and we can see that we are fetching now data out from the Pokemon endpoint. And here we should be done 
pretty soon and we can see that we're done and then we fetch data out from that very end point using a few api calls as well and now if we would refresh our lakehouse folder we have two folders here we have the pokemon and then we have the berry and under this berry we have the berry data that came out from there and now we can read that berry data that we just fetched from that API using this code here. Also note here that I'm using a wildcard here, which means that we are reading the data out from all of these files here. And this same logic would work for that Pokemon data as well. But let's read that berry data to a data frame and then let's display that data here. And let's see how does that berry data look. And here we can see that now we have the names of berries here and then we have the URLs for that Pokemon API where we could find more information about those berries. Also in this example I just ran these Pokemon and berry endpoints one by one. If you'd like to see a video where I create a notebook where we can run these API calls in parallel instead of one by one, leave some comments down below. Now you should have a basic idea how you can work with APIs using notebooks in Must Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.